Hello, good morning and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Jenny on the Telly. I am really, 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 really excited today because I have the fabulous James Hood, who's going to, going to be sharing like his knowledge, his expertise around brand stories. So um, first things first, this is currently live and you may be watching it on the recording and that's fine too. So as with all things technology, sometimes the line drops. It could be you, it could be me, it could be James. If that happens, we'll all stay where we are and we'll get back on the line. Um, so a couple of really useful things. Have a big cup of tea or a glass of water, something nice to drink. And if you're partial to a wine and it's, you know, wine pop, <laughs> well, we, we don't mind that as well. Um, but we're not encouraging you to get drunk while you watch this. Other great things to have, pen and paper. Now, I know that you're probably watching this online, whether it's, you know, on a tablet or on your laptop or something like that, and you could type notes as you go along, but you really won't want to. And welcome to another you episode. You'll want Jenny to, sorry, and I can hear myself being really, played really, really. live. <laughs> I'll switch that off. The ones of modern technology. For those of you that are watching this live, there is about a 60 second delay. So, if you do want to, um, you know, ask any questions or anything else like that, if you pop them in the comments below this video, and whether it's live or whether it's recording, I will get back and answer any questions I can. And if they're for James, then I will phone a friend and say, James, help answer these questions. So um, feel free to pop them in the box below. So have a pen, paper, water. The reason I advocate water, it's great um, rehydration from your brain and it helps you to absorb the nuggets that you're about to hear. So some of these tips and techniques and, and things that we talk about in this interview will be really great for you, whether you're a, um, an aspiring business owner, whether you're a newish business owner, whether you're a very well established business owner, or even if you are somebody that's watching this and you work for quite a big company, you know, there's quite a big spectrum that James can cover with this work. And some of the stuff you hear, I think for a lot of you is gonna be brand spanking new, hence the pen and paper. And what it will do, I know, because in the conversations I've had with James already, it will really open up um, creative ideas for you, new options, new thoughts, and also help you with a few step-by-step -step pieces of the process. So for those of you that are looking to expand and convey your brand message, you know, grow your own business goals, your life goals, I think this will be really, really great. And I invite you, even after you've watched this video, to save it, subscribe to the channel and have a look at some of the other interviews too, but go back and watch it. You know, go back to the bits where you really want to write things down. And for those of you who are like big fans on Twitter, then feel free to tweet us at any time, whether it's live or whether it's, you know, um, after the event. And I'm just looking down now to make sure that I give the right Twitter handles. So I'm Jenny Kovats at Gift Wish LTD. James, our very special guest, is also um, on Gift Wish. So you can either tweet him and he's at James Hood Inc, I-N-C for Charlie. Um, and his company is Convey Content. So at convey content. So any one of those, you know, please tweet and you know, what can we have some hashtags? What hashtags could we use? Oh. Um we say convey, yeah, convey story. Do you convey, think that's yeah. convey, convey convey your story? Yeah, convey your story. Hashtag convey your story. See? There you go, nice and easy. So um, let me tell you a little bit about James and I'm just putting my phone on silent because if any phone rings, it will usually be mine. So James and I met many years ago um, at an event and one of the things I was really struck by when I first met James was that he was like, he's really sharp, very approachable, very friendly, extremely knowledgeable with no arrogance. And I remember learning so much from him and he stuck in my mind, which as part of the visibility vibe is kind of what you want. You want to be memorable in a good way. And um, the thing that I loved about how he was, was that it wasn't contrived. He was just being his natural, authentic self. So it came as no surprise to find that um, he was an editor of a really lovely magazine. And, um, you know, really grateful to you, James, because he asked me to contribute a few, um, few articles um, during the time that we knew each other then. 
and um, we caught up. We'd, we'd lost contact for a little bit, and we caught up again very recently, and we were kind of asking what each other were up to, and he's now trans transcended, I would say, and progressed into um, conveying brand stories. But in a way, he hasn't just done that. He's been doing it all along, um, and that's why I wanted to share him with you. And the truth of the matter is, when I find people that know their stuff and, and love what they do as much as James, I kind of don't want to share them with you. <laughs> I want to keep them all to myself, but he's really worth sharing. So, um, you know, if you've got questions and things, please, you know, do pop them in the, the box underneath um, this video and we'll happily answer them. Um, but more importantly, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to introduce you to James. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. What thank a lovely introduction. Thank you. I've not, it's the most flattered I've been in a long time. Um, oh. Thank you for having me. Thanks for inviting me to talk. Now, you're more than welcome. I'm so excited about this. So I've got so many questions to ask you. So I'm just going to kind of jump straight in and sure. start with my, my first question, really, because you know that I'm nosy by nature, but also that uh, a lot of people watching this may not have heard of me or may not have heard of you. So you talk about conveying your brand story, and I mentioned that you were an editor. So how did you get into all of this? So uh, initially, I, I mean, I started year, years ago, well over t t 10 or 11 years ago now as a copywriter. So that's where I sort of um, learned the skills of writing well uh, for big brands like Ford, and then moved into marketing, um, copywriting, um, for uh, sort of brochures and, and marketing literature and magazines before I became an editor. Um, and I was editor at Fine, which is the magazine you're, you're referring to, for four years. And we were just right, I mean, I wrote stories all day long. I interviewed people all day long. Um, I, you know, I learned how to really spot a good story, a good angle. Um, and um, during that time, I, I, did, I, I really helped a lot of businesses. Um, we were funded by advertising. The publication was funded by advertising. So, um, and, and as people know, when they, if you pick up a, a magazine um, or, or you like to, to like to read them, you'll know that there are an awful lot of businesses um, in these publications. Um, and I found that I was interviewing them to help not just tell a story and make it interesting for our readers, but also to help further their own interests, further their businesses. Um, I sort of had a bit of an unofficial mantra that I was really helping the, commu the business community in mm. the area that we operated by telling stories on their behalf. And that we kind of had a bit of a, a partnership going. Businesses would provide me with interesting readership con content for our readers. And at the same time, I could guide them on interesting stories that would also promote their companies. Okay. So without really realizing it, I was doing content marketing for other companies as a, as a magazine editor. And then, you know, after four years, I decided it was time to move on. And I, and I got such a kick out of helping businesses grow with brand stories that I now do it full time. Oh, excellent. So there must be something in that, because I always say people gravitate towards doing what they love. So there must have been something in that that made me think, oh, this is the bit that I want to keep and expand on. What was it about that? Well, first of all, that's a really good point. And I do think that I believe we're all given sort of signs along the way, uh, um, along the roads that, that will guide us into what we're actually meant to be doing. And um, although I was loving my marketing work, I was actually approached to take the editing job and now I see that as a real gift because it taught me how to really dig for great, for great brand stories and do what I'm doing now. Mm. Um, so I, I, I definitely see that um, as what I'm meant to be doing. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. So I know that um, it's funny because in some respects, from the kind of the corporate, the bigger company point of view, brand stories is starting to become a bit of a buzzword in that industry. Yeah. Um, whereas on the entrepreneurial end, the one man bands, people are um, often come to me and ask me about kind of sharing their story. 
but the brand story piece hasn't really taken hold in some of those smaller companies. So mm -hmm. if somebody was kind of watching this right now and said, you know, well, let's start with the basics. What is a brand story? What's a good brand story? What would you say it would be? Well, they, I think it's important to say that there isn't just one. Mm. You do have your brand story. Um, if you take a look at um, the likes of, of Tom's, the shoes, which uh, they donate a pair of shoes to a third world country or person in need every time you buy a pair of their shoes. Um, it's becoming quite a big brand now. They have a wonderful story about how they began and that's their brand story. But I think it's important to not only say that you have con you can have continuous brand stories that are relevant mm. and provide relevant content to readers. Mm. Um, but I think it's also a really good point to say that any company, large or small, whether you're a small one, one man band or you're a multinational corporation, mm. uh, can have a story and has stories to tell. Yeah. It's just a matter of um, going digging for them. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So if somebody's um, thinking, right, okay, I want to get into, you know, eliciting my stories for my brand, how or where do they begin? I think the, the most important thing to, to know first, and it's probably a bit of a boring cliche, but you have, you, I don't believe you can do any marketing without knowing why you exist and um, needless to say who your customers are. That's really important. But the why is really important because lately we're seeing brands become successful because their audience and consumers fall in love with them. Mm. They love their values, they love what they produce, and they love what it says about them when they make a purchase. Mm. Now, I know Apple's an overused example, but you know, Apple really has de developed a community of Apple lovers and they share and they wear their white headphones so that people see that it's Apple. And that's really what a lot of content marketing is doing. It's sort of creating a, a community um, of people who, 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 who love what you do. So the why is really important. And, and then learning, learning who your customer, customers is also really important. Mm, I love that. I'm going to tweet that. The why is really important. <laughs> and then I think... You know, there, there's a there's a to get in order to get started. I mean, I would say start with the reason you the reason you began your company in the first place. And people lose sight of that. You know, if you've been in business for 10, 12, 13 years, I've worked with a few clients now that are, are really struggling because they've gotten so sidetracked with accounts and they've done, tried so many marketing things that they're they're complete they can't see the wood for the trees and. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people who are at the, in charge of their companies um, are so busy with other things that they kind of forget why they began in the first place. So I would say a good place to start is why is it a good thing that your business exists? Mm. What made you jump out of bed in the early days and actually start the company? And, and, and why, why should people love that story and love what you do? Mm. And then there's an entire other process. I don't know if you want me to go into that just yet or if you plan to ask that um, further down the line. But, you know, there, there are processes you can go through to find brand stories and, and create content and content strategies and plans as well. Excellent, excellent. And um, it's interesting because you touched on this um, at the beginning where you talked about plural stories. Can you say a bit more about, you know, what a plural story is, what that means? So, yeah, but what I meant by that is people, I think, are getting a bit confused by all the press and blogs and tweets about brands, your brand story, thinking that it's just one thing. Mm -hmm. um, but what I meant by that was that really it's the plural of brand story. You, you, there is more than one in your organisation. And if you want to, a really successful content um if you want really successful content activity that's going to build resilience, mm -hmm. you need to be looking at brand stories more than one, as in plural. Mm -hmm. You know, and that brand story, like I mentioned with Tom's, is great. Um, but if you continually look for brand stories around your organisation, 
you um, will be able to feed content to your audience over time and build up a, lo- a, a real long-term plan strategy that's going to get them falling for, for whatever it is that you're selling, products or services. Let's so that's what I meant by that. It's, it's a continuous effort to look for brand stories. And there's a process behind that which I can, I can go into. Yeah, because I'm thinking to myself, sorry, I'm drinking water with sage in it. And I'm just a bit of sage. Mm-hmm. Excuse me for chewing. So, um, I mean, I kind of want to dig deeper into this and ask this question from two kind of points of view. So one is, let's say that I am a marketer working for quite a big company. Maybe it's Tom Shoes or, or something like that. Um, yeah. How do, like, what do I do? How do I go about creating stories looking out for stories what do you do in a business like that especially when i'm one person in the business and then on the flip side if you're a smaller business like maybe myself where you know i can pretty much my stories are my stories i don't need to report it back to anybody so let's start with the bigger companies what would you encourage like one one thing for them to do i always say to bigger companies don't go don't go it alone you know, you, you, your your company has a responsibility to help you find brand stories. Mm. Um, so the first thing I would say is, you know, tell people to share. Tell people to share if they see something that's really great. Uh, I mean, an example is I recently worked for a big hotel group mm. um, to create a magazine for them. And the company's very large, mm. has a lot of staff. And obviously, because it's hotels, they've got different sites everywhere. So people aren't always communicating with marketing as they should. Yes. Um, and through the interview process, while we were creating this publication for them, um, you know, we, we, I should also add that one of the objectives was to, to pre- present them as a, as a, a quality employer. Mm. And I was interviewing staff about the way they felt about working there. And it, we, we sort of uncovered that one of the um, kitchen pot cleaners uh, had left school at 16 and gone to work there and um, realised his passion was for the gardens at the hotel. Mm-hmm. And so they, they allowed him to transfer um, to the gardener's assistant and he worked his way up to head gardener at one of the hotel sites. Mm-hmm. And it was just such a lovely story that we ha- we had to include it in the in the magazine, and obviously it had the double benefit of being an entertaining read for the for the person with the magazine, the audience, but also it helps pitch that company as someone that values promoting from within, mm. um, values hard work and commitment and loyalty to the company. So it has that kind of double impact. Yeah. Um, that's an example of. I hope I didn't go on with it there, but that's an example of how you can use the rest of the organisation, which was your original question, to really help you find brand stories amongst all of the information. And there's a lot of it, I understand that. But yeah, you, and then the other thing that marketing people can do is start to ask yourself, you know, there are very, sort of few elements to a good brand story. And, and one of them is, I'll go through them now if you'd like, is, mm. is yeah. So I'm going to be making notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to make, it, make a note. Um, I often say to people, you know, first of all, why do you start? We've touched on that already. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a great example with Spanx. You know, Spanx, the, uh, uh, the women's underwear with the, you know, where, where the owner or the founder kind of first decided she was feeling a little bit too... Uh, bloated shall we say or oh uh, lately i love that brand i really love yeah. that one as well it's yeah. a great brand and it has a great brand story mm. so you know she tried on the the tights that day and she, she felt slimmer so she cut off the bottoms of the of the tights and spanx was born that day you know that day so that kind of story is entertaining and that can be communicated to people but also to continue that you know, ask yourself what you do. What does your company do that's awesome, I often say to people. Mm. And that could be anything from the hotel company promoting their kitchen cleaner to the gardener. Um, could be charity work, um, you know, and relate it back to your values and the reason for your being, like I said earlier, mm. um, and use that to kind of guide content story ideas um, about the things that you do. Maybe, maybe it's just that you support 
a 10k run or you know you you your company is very very passionate about its carbon footprint or um, anything like that so ask yourself what you do that's awesome and why it's a good thing that you're around and use that to create stories that people will so people can start to build a picture of who you are and what you value mm. um, the other thing is what's your company an expert in and this is a great one that marketing people can should know marketing you know people who, who know the organization should know what you're good at mm-hmm. um, and be generous with information you know you're a classic example Jenny because you had a business gift wish and you were very generous with your advice in the magazine in fine. Um, and that's content, you know, you might not, it might not feel like it. I know that it can often be disguised as PR, but content is, is a, is a brand story. And what you're doing is giving away really useful information to people. So ask yourself, what, what are you an expert in? What do you want to be seen as an expert in? Mm. And be generous with some advice and information. Mm. Uh, And what that does is then starts to target people who are interested in what you have to say. Um, And in time, they'll start start to respect you and buy from you. Mm, I love that. Um, That's that's a good way for marketing people to start. start Mm. That's really great. And I love that because I do love the story of, um, you know, Sarah Blakely. Um, Yeah. Yeah, the Spank story is great. And I think sometimes, you know, people think about how their business started from terms of like um, innovation or inventing something and they forget that the story in itself, yeah, it, you know, people are going to want to hear it, you know. And it can relate to anyone, you know. I, d- I wouldn't want anyone watching to be concerned that they don't now have a global underwear business like Sarah Blakely but you know you can you can apply it to whatever you do Mm, yeah absolutely absolutely and you know what do you do that's really awesome what do you do that's really great Um, and relate it back to your values and it's funny because so many people um kind of they're passionate about starting the business they get straight into the business and sometimes they don't take the time to think about what their own values are or those of their business whereas um, corporations tend to have those and they might review them every few years or something and it's yeah. a really great thing I mean as a as a coach I would add to that if you're sitting there saying what do you mean what are my values a really good place to start is um, what drives you to do certain things and this is a bit of a provocative way of eliciting it but it's a good way think for a moment you know what do you consider as good and bad in like behaviors of people um, in brands in things that you don't like you do like that polarity actually points to your values it's the reason why some people do certain activities and some people just never touch it with a barge pole um yeah and a lot of what we do is actually driven by our values and i i often say if you think about it like an iceberg i know this is a very well used personal development analogy but think of it as an iceberg the the ice cap is what people see a lot of your values and what you believe to be true are actually under the surface. So because of this, it's not always glaringly obvious to yourself what what your values are. It's only when somebody does something that you don't like or, um, you know, or you perceive isn't right, doesn't sit well with you in your books. That's normally, that normally points to value. And, um, it's the reason why people leave jobs and and do all sorts of things leave people or you know form relationships or choose not to form relationships it's not really about right or wrong it's just what you hold dear what you really value as as pursuing and what you don't so start with those and it doesn't matter how random it is just scribble them down write them down you know there'll be a reason why you think it's acceptable to buy a high-end brand or why you don't think it's acceptable to buy a high-end brand that would be related to your values yeah so yeah um and the other thing um that i came across a few years ago was when you um look at a a brand that you admire you know apple is a is a well-named brand i have three brands that i absolutely love i'm going to shout them out apple is definitely one of them um, there's a company called Kajabi that hosts online, you know, online um, like training classrooms. What was formerly known in HR as e-learning, but it's much more fun now. 
Um, I love that brand. And if you, you know, what I'll do is I'll put a link to Kajabi under the video um, so that you can just have a look and see if that's your thing. And the other brand is um, a beautiful, beautiful business um, owned and created by a lady called Catherine Dean. And she makes the most amazing dresses. In fact, in the little picture, although it's a little bit stretched, the green dress I'm wearing is a Catherine Dean dress. When I speak, I tend to wear her dresses. And when I looked at those brands and what I love about them, on the surface, I could seem a little shallow, okay? But it's, <laughs> it's, what, it's what is behind the brand. So, you know, Catherine is the most, you know, I've met Catherine, I've been privileged to meet her. She's the most like the gentil um really just beautiful person to meet beautiful on the inside and out which isn't always associated in the fashion industry let's face it you know um she you know she learned how to make lace at a very young age and she incorporates that now in her designs you know 30 years later um and just go and check out her website google her because she's she's amazing and she's she started doing bridal wear and things as well but the interesting thing is, is that she just produces these beautiful, stunning dresses, for example, and some of the designs have been picked up by celebrities, you know, and it's, it's not because she's sat at her desk going, push, 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 I want famous people to wear my clothes. She just does something that she loves and she wants every woman to feel great. She donates to charities, you know, um, and actually, yes, I love the dresses, but I love the ethos behind the brand as well. Yeah. And it's almost like some of my values seem to align with her values. That's exactly spot on. Yeah, I think that's why values are so important and understanding mm -hmm. what, what you're doing. And it's a really good, that's a really good point as well, because if anyone's watching that it is like, you know, as you asked in the last question, I'm sure about where to get started. I think looking at brands you love and you, and give who, to which you give your money mm -hmm. is a really great place to start because ask yourself, well, why do I part with my hard-earned money to purchase a certain item or go to a certain restaurant, um, mm. wear a certain dress like you? And I think you'll start to realise that you are, are aligned with mm. what they do and why they do it. But also, um, you 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 have an affinity with them, and you 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 like you 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 start to. I call them. Yeah, I call it raving fans. You've become a raving fan. Mm. Uh, over time but, yeah. I'm certainly a raving fan of those three brands and you know Kajabi I've never met the founders of Kajabi I just love what they do you know Apple I haven't met the people behind Apple I wasn't fortunate enough to meet Steve Jobs but I just love the ethos I like that outside of the box thinking it's mm. interesting because I feel like we should do some sort of workshop on on just, even just this subject because I, one of the that I love is when you're talking to people about their values and brands and things like that that it's like I've, I've done it corporately before where there's been like 30 or 40 people in the room and the vibe in the room is really lovely it's yeah it just makes people feel good thinking about what they love what they want to connect with um so yeah i think it runs deep so maybe we should do let's something do like that. let's do it yeah watch if this space that, yeah if that's of interest tweet us and ask us and let's see if we can make that happen and if not we're not attached to it either you know <laughs> so um Excellent. So, gosh, I wrote down so many notes there and so many things to tweet. And, uh, you know, if you are watching this and thinking, what can I tweet? You know, if there's anything that rings true, it resonates with you when you see, see it and you think, I, I really need to share that, do. Um, you know, and I just think going back to the basics, the why is really important. You said that a little while ago. I'm definitely going to be tweeting that afterwards. I'm trying not to tweet as I speak to you because I don't want to keep. Um, bending my head down for you to all see the top of my head. So um, I know that James is popped off and he's Sorry, back. Sorry, Jenny, I'm back I, now. I was just I apologising and saying that I didn't want to keep tweeting while I was speaking to you because otherwise I'm doing this and the top of my head isn't a good look, really. <laughs> so, yeah, feel free if there's something that you've heard here that really resonates with you um, and that you, you like the sound of and, and, you know, you just think, yeah, that makes me feel really, really great. I want to share it. Please do share it. So, so um, yeah, I love talking about um, values and things and could do that all day long, but won't because there's so many other things. Like, I want to ask you this yeah. question. If you had, like, one secret to give away about conveying your brand and your brand story, what would it be? Oh. 
this is quite controversial, but I think the secret would probably be that certainly for modern day 2015 content and brand stories, I think the secret I have is that it doesn't require masses of technical power and knowledge. I think there's a bit of a concern at the moment that people are wary of starting it because it's digital and you need an awful lot of um, money and time and and sort of uh, systems in place mm. to make it work for you. I think that's a bit of a myth and you can actually get started on your brand stories today without the need for I know I understand the need for an ROI um, but you know people there's an awful lot of digital agencies out there providing great services but you I think there's a bit of a misconception that it's a technical activity mm. and people are therefore a bit reluctant to get started when in actual fact it's more of a sort of filtering of information at the early in the early stages you know finding out who you are and what you've got to tell people mm. um, and digging going digging for great stories so don't be frightened or put off by the technical side of things mm. um, just start hunting yeah i love that because one of the one of the myths um and the things that people won't tell you that ties in with that is um, especially from starting a business. I mean, my business has been going for just over five years now. And one of the things that I thought had to happen, as well as kind of having a big marketing budget and all of that, I thought that before you could start sharing anything, you had to have a massive audience. And that simply isn't true. No. Why don't you start creating your brand story now? Um, you know, in terms of visibility, I know people often get worried about getting themselves out there. Well, why not get yourself out there and hone your story while you're still growing your numbers? Don't wait so thousands and like millions of people to go, hmm, I better think about that. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree with that. And also you have to ask yourself, is it, it's, a, it's quality over quantity. Do you have a, a hundred followers who share what share your values and like to buy from you versus 10,000 followers? Um, who have just been coerced into following you because of some quick trick yeah. and who don't really care about what you do and probably don't pay much attention. I think quality of, over, over quantity um, is, is, is really, really important. Completely. I, I'm actually going to go like that and high five you <laughs> for that because I completely agree with that. Um, yeah, too many people focus on massive numbers and it's interesting because I've got, um, you know, friends, peers, uh, people that are getting started as well as people that have been highly successful. Some of them have been my clients, you know, some of them have been my friends. And also some of them have been people that I've watched from afar. And, you know, there's this thing about you've got to build your database or your list and, and get more people to do this, that and the other. But the truth of the matter is I'm doing OK on a fairly small list. I don't have tens and of millions of thousands of people um but i tell you something the people in it's almost like my community are juicy they're you know they're really lovely um and they're really supportive and as you say if you if you're on twitter with 100 followers and they are retweeting things and really feeling the work that you do then wouldn't you rather that than having millions and millions of people that just don't connect with you people yeah. don't like to feel like they're not being seen or heard no so you know one and also going back to what you said about about that i think you know people kind of get a bit frustrated marketing people in particular that, that this is not we've, we've got we've become so used to putting out an advert on television or wherever it may be in a magazine and getting that instant re reaction to or instant sales you know that's what television advertising has done for years mm -hmm. but this is a content and brand stories is for some, unfortunately, it's a long-term process. Mm. By its very definition, content marketing is about building relationships and engaging with 
a very clearly defined audience, but mm. but make, uh, the, the right audience, and that takes time. You know, it does take time to build a relationship and mm. and develop that affinity with a brand and connection, and and that's um, that's that's something that people people should should do, but also not but understand that it's not going to be mm. a quick fix. It brings me on to another question I have on that actually. Um, is there such a thing as an inappropriate story to, to share? You know, how do you look at these stories? Because many of us have multiple stories that we can share. What's an appropriate story to share? How do we know? It's a good question. I think, <laughs> um, you know, it's something that I suppose it's a bit of an obvious answer, but you, you have to judge yourself and what, what what's right for your business i'd say there probably are inappropriate stories mm -hmm. these days you know you can't really do it something wrong or immoral or um unfair as a business without it becoming public you know you have you need transparency in fact you have you have no choice anymore mm -hmm. um, so there will be things that you might prefer weren't public knowledge, and I think it's okay to do that. You know, that's often what you have comms teams and PR departments for to make sure that things that should be should remain private do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I personally think that there are there are there are there is information, particularly financial information, that you might not want made public knowledge. Um, you, it's just a tricky one, you know. If, if for, off the top of my head, if a staff member did something that you really didn't want to be sharing with anyone, then, then, you, you know, that's obviously not going to make it into your content blog, your blog strategy. Um, I guess it depends on your industry as well, doesn't it? Because I'm, um, I'm thinking of two things as you say this. I'm thinking of, um, was it Ratner's the jewelry chain where the the CEO said our jewelry is our jewelry's rubbish or something like that and then sales yeah. plummeted, shares plummeted and then I'm thinking like for example I know that a lot of people in my community work in personal development maybe they're coaches and things like that and sometimes their own story um, is kind of part of how they got to where they got to that that day and sometimes there's little bumps in the road so yeah, yeah. I I'm yeah. In that respect, I think no. I think that there are very few instances, I believe, when you in setting up an, a company mm. which is going to provide a service or, or be of benefit to people, where you you your story should be concealed or hidden. You mm. know, most people come from a place of good intentions when they set up a company. There's a reason for it. They they have a passion for it. There's a need. There's a gap in the market. Mm. Um, so, so no, I can't really think of any exam any example um, of when you you might want to not share that st share that story. But just like I said it before, I think judge judge it yourself, go about it sensitively, um, yeah, and then and share the good share the good stuff instead. Yeah. I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, some people might be thinking, oh, this, this storytelling, it's too good to be true, you know. Um, you know, is there, is there a catch to it? Does, is this good for everybody? Or... Do you know what? I'm so glad you asked that question because that, obviously, because it's my work, I, I, I believe in it so much. But I wouldn't be doing it if, it was just, if I was just going through the motions and it was just a, a day job for me. I mean, I, it is... It is the way to connect to the customers you want now you know advertising is great i'm not I, I don't i don't dismiss advertising at all or below the line or sales letters anything like that but what i do believe in is is that there there is no catch to, to content marketing because what you're doing is staying authentic to yourself and to your brand mm -hmm. you're conveying no pun intended with the name there, <laughs> your, your like we've said all along your values your reason for being the reason it's a good thing that you exist you know the good that you do um and your and being generous with your information and and that in turn will sort of build if you're if you're if you manage it properly it will build the right audience for you it's mm. relatively affordable so there's no you know, there isn't any catch there i mean relatively speaking you know and i also think that brands that are 
building that relationship with their or the right the customers they want that that they're doing really well you know i mean th- th- there are there are so many instances of, of brands now being successful because their consumers have done the marketing for them mm. you know, consumers are now sharing and liking and they're becoming the brand advocates unpaid brand advocates that are just telling all their friends about you know the new beats headphones or the the latest um drink and you know the latest place to go and i think it's 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 um i I personally don't believe there's a catch to it if you do it right it's a really lovely way of building um relationships with your your audience and learning about them Mm. and having them build the community for you Mm, absolutely okay yeah absolutely James, you've just shared so much juicy stuff. I've been kind of right. I'm going to go back and watch this video again myself. Um, I think when when we dropped in the call, I, we've lost your we've lost your banner. So oh, I, banner. I want to just like shout you out and say like if people want to find out more information about you, you know, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to try and bring this back for you now. There you go. Yay! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Twitter, James Hood Inc. Uh, or Convey Content. You can find me and my phone number if you would like it on at conveyconsultancy.co.uk. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from anyone, even if it's just a quick question and they, they want some more information. Please get in touch and ask, ask me any questions if I haven't been clear enough or you want me to elaborate on something, something else for you. Yeah, so I love that. So, you know, do, do go over to James's website and do say hello to him on Twitter as well. So that's um, at James Hood Inc. Um, and also convey content as well. So... I think people can contact if they need to, you know, please, please do do what I did, even though you might not want to share this gorgeous information, you know, go onto the YouTube channel, click on subscribe, you'll get notifications of any kind of interviews or activities on this. But if there's someone that you know that could do with a leg up in their business and you think needs to hear this, please, you know, send this video on to them so that they can at least start to um, have a think about some of the things that we've shared. And uh, yeah, if if any of you want to um, find out more about developing your values, whether you're you know part of a corporation, part of a, a big organisation, or whether you're one man band, you know, and you're kind of going it alone, get in contact with us. Um, my details are on the screen. I'm Jenny Kovacs, um, and one of my brands is a visibility vibe, which helps you to stand out in such a way that people see you and come towards you instead of you having to chase them down. So um, I feel that uh, James will possibly be an, a guest for my private clients as well, because what you shared was amazing. Um, so you know, if you want to know any more about what I do, you can literally Google me. I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, I'm all over the place. Um, or you can go to my website, which is um, all the W's, gift-wish.co.uk. So I look forward to, to hearing more from you all and look forward to hearing what you got most out of this interview, you know, what you're going to do as a result of something that you heard. James, is there anything else that you want to add to what we've talked about today? No, I know. I think good luck if you're starting some brand storytelling soon. Um, I, I just hope what, I, what I've said um, is, is useful. The only other thing I was, I was thinking that I perhaps didn't say is that you can, there are sort of various um, different types of brand stories that if you're, if you're using content online that you might want to consider, for example, um, newsworthy um, Kind of time critical stuff versus mm. content that that has longevity and that you can keep for for months and years. Um, mm. There is a difference between that, so make sure you sort of mix and match the content that you uh, use. But there's plenty of resources online to help you with perishable, non-perishable, time critical content and things like that. But good luck with good luck with writing your brand story. I was going to say, I found, um, you know, as a, as a business owner, you wear these different hats, don't you? You wear like marketing, sales, you know, PR, admin, mm-hmm. you know, accountant, all these different hats. And uh, 
the one thing that I would say is I spent probably in the first 18 months of my business trawling through Google, trying to find out stuff. You know, I've wasted so much time. Imagine that it was the other way around and you had to pay yourself every day for the amount of time you spend trawling through <laughs> stuff. My tip is cut out the middleman. Hit James up straight away. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, because he's so knowledgeable, and it will save you um, hours. You know, kind of joking aside, of frustration of trying to find things and finding contradictory stuff on Google or something that somebody's just stuck up there for a laugh because they were out with their uni mates and a bit drunk, or you know, all those sorts of things. So, thank you so much for what you've shared. Thank you for um, having me. You've been brilliant, and I've I've written so many notes, and I'm going to go off and tweet now, and uh, <laughs> you know. If you're watching this on the replay, enjoy. Let us know how you get on and what you do with the information. So Fine. thank you so much and uh, bye for now, everyone watching.